In this how-to video, I will show you how to plot the staffing distribution chart for your project and calculate the cost. The cost of a software project is predominantly labor. Software projects do not have, for the most part, the cost of goods, and so it's just labor. Labor is simply staffing times time, or the area under the staffing distribution chart. Writing software shows that if you plot the staffing distribution of your project and calculate the area underneath it, you would actually find the cost of the project. The way to do it is using some kind of a numerical integral where you take slices in time between dates of interest, find the level of staffing at that point, multiply it, and then sum it all up. The result is a chart that looks along what you see here on the slide. You can see the front end at the beginning, phasing in, peak staffing, phasing out, and release. I will show you next how to generate this chart. I will be using the pair of files from chapter 11, uh, numbered 5, which is the normal solution. Let me show you what the chart looks like complete. It looks like this. And we're going to start, you can actually use any of the files in chapter 11 almost as a template. In fact, I'm going to start with a blank file that doesn't have any of the data, and I will show you how to get the data out of Microsoft Project. So here's the empty file. It has no dates and no level of resources. If you look at MS Project, I have here the project already fully staffed. The first thing I need to do is create dates of interest out of it, dates at which activities start or complete. And so you make sure that you have two columns here, start and finish, and you simply highlight the two columns and copy it. Then you go back to Excel. Don't do it in the same spreadsheet where you do the actual chart. Create a new temporary spreadsheet and just paste it. When you do the pasting, you're going to get all the dates like this, and you want to make a single long list. So I'm going to cut from this column and paste it at the end of the other column. I also want to delete the header. This would actually just confuse Excel. Okay. So I highlight the whole sequence of dates. I go to the data part of the ribbon, and there's a widget that I call remove, depend remove duplicates. And now Excel has condensed the list of dates into a single list that has just unique dates. I can also now sort it. And now I have all the dates of interest in the project, all unique, all sorted. Copy that. Go back to where you want to create the chart and paste it. Next, we need to start staffing the project. Now, some of the staffing of the project is actually not done in MS Project because MS Project is only for specific activities. Your planning assumption should include a list of staffing requirements that do not map to any activities. For example, the project requires a project manager start to finish, but there's no activity in the project for a project manager, like be a good project manager here. But you need to account for that resource. Same goes for a product manager, and for that matter, even an architect. So I'm going to go to the beginning and type 111, because I need one project manager, one product manager, and one architect start to finish. By clicking that blue dot, I made Excel expand that selection and values all the way until it hits an empty row, and that's basically perfect for me. Next, we have to assign additional resources based on the planning assumption. For example, we had the planning assumption in Chapter 11 that you need one DevOps specialist since the moment construction starts till the end. So if I look at my project file, I see it makes you sort, sort it by start date. I will see that construction starts here at 4.15. And so I will find 4.15 on my dates over here on the left, put one for the DevOps specialist, and just copy that all the way to the end. I also see based on the planning assumption that after the second milestone, we need a tester till the end of the project. And so that's basically here on 
So I will go to my testers column, put one over here, all the way to the end. I also see I have system testing activities requiring two testers, and that start at 10.4 all the way to 11.22. And so I would actually bump at the end for two. Much the same way, I can look at when do I need to use a test engineer. Now I can see I have an activity over here for test engineer and an activity over here. And so what you could do, and this is a very nice tip, is I'm going to sort it. And I'm going to click uh, sort by, and I'm going to click and I select a custom sort. In this case, I'm going to sort it by resource names. And the secondary sort, I'm going to sort it by start. So now if I look at the test engineer, I see the test engineer appears on the network at 4.15 and departs on 7.12. And so I find 4.15 over here and 7.12 over here. Now I need to, so to staff the developers and I would do exactly the same thing except I have to do it multiple times because I have multiple developers. So we look at developer 1. Developer 1 appears on network on 4.15 and departs on network on 10.4. And so I will go to 4.15, type 1 and smear it all the way to 10.4. Next I have to add developer 2. Developer 2 appears on network on 5.6 and disappears on 10.11. 5.6 is here and so I would make this all the way to 10.11. And of course now it drops back just to one developer over here. Developer 3 appears on 4.15, departs on 6.21. And so I will bump this up to 2 and 2. And I have to expand this all the way to 6.21. There you go. And if I scroll a little bit to the right, I see that I have the staffing distribution chart complete. Next, I need to calculate the cost. The cost is simply that numerical integral I showed you before, and you do it in this column. Every cell here, what it actually does, if you look at the formula, it sums up the values of that row, and then times it on the date difference, on that slice in time between the two dates of interest. And that gives you that sliver of men months for that date of interest. If you do it across all of them and you sum it all up, you simply get the total cost for the project. We can even calculate this way direct and indirect cost. In this project, the total cost is simply the sum as I've shown you, but the direct cost is only activities that add direct measurable value for the project. According to the planning assumption and the Microsoft project, it's only activities I can actually see in MS project. And so I'm going to highlight here in yellow activities which are just direct cost. And so the architect in the front end doing architecture and project design is direct cost. Everything the test engineer does is direct cost. Everything developers do, according to the planning assumption, is direct cost and also the final act of system testing is direct cost. So now what I have to do is a very discrete way, I have to sum up only the yellow activities. If I look at any one of these things, you can see it sums up the two uh, yellow cells, but the same formula, you multiply it by the time slice between those two dates of interest. You sum this whole up, and then you get the direct cost of the project. And of course, the indirect cost is total cost minus direct cost. Much the same, we can calculate additional uh, metrics, such as what is the average level of staffing for the project. And so the average level of staffing here is basically reversing the total cost calculation. Total cost, the unit is men months. So if I take the uh, total cost, divide it by the difference in time, and normalize it to months, I would get the average level of staffing. Much the same way you can do exactly the same calculation, but only for the developers. You can see it on this particular sum. You can calculate average number of developers, average number of testers, and so on. And that's how you calculate the cost and build the staffing distribution chart for your project.
For more on these and related ideas, see Writing Software.